everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you're here and I'm so glad you clicked on today's video. So for some reason this month your girl decided to make the biggest TBR for herself. I don't know what compelled me to make this massive TBR pile for the month of April. Usually on average I read around six to seven books every month and for some reason I thought I could read like 15. Here is my April TBR pile. I still have so many books as you can see on the TBR for this month and we literally only have about a week left. So love that for us. I have nine books in total left on my TBR for the month of April and in today's video we are going to try and attempt to finish my TBR. Realistically, I don't know if I can finish all these books before the month is over, but I'm hopeful. I'm optimistic. I thought this would be a really fun way to kind of push myself though to get through as much of my TBR as possible. I've definitely been in a super weird like reading slump. I don't know what it is. I just haven't been reading as much as I usually do. I'm hoping that this kind of gives me the motivation to get through my TBR pile and just like full on launch me back into reading. I'm quickly gonna go through the books I have in the pile. So first up we have Icebound by Meredith Trapp. This is just supposed to be a cutie little hockey romance. We have The Veiled Kingdom by Holly Renee. I got sent this book I think last month and when I read the little blurb on the back it just reminded me so much of Akatar and Powerless that I'm like okay I need to read this book and see what it's about. We have Legendary by Stephanie Garber. This is book two in the Caraval trilogy. The Night Shift by Annie Crown. I have been dying to read this. It just sounds absolutely adorable. The main character in this is like a huge bookworm. She loves reading. First Down by Grace Riley. This is Beyond the Play book one. This is a cute and fun little football romance. We have Bride by Allie Hazelwood. I can't believe I haven't read this book yet but sometimes it takes me like a little bit to get into Allie Hazelwood books so I've been putting it off. Foxglove by Adeline Grace. If you know, you know. If you were here last month for my Belladonna reading vlog, you know how excited I am for this one. Juniper Hill by Devony Perry. Juniper Hill is book two in the series and I think it's like a single mom trope. And then last but not least, we have The Score by Elle Kennedy. This is book three in the Off Campus series. Very, very excited about this because it's all about Allie and Dean and a lot of people say that they're like the best couple out of the series, which is crazy because I'm like a huge diehard Garrett Graham girly so very excited to see like what Allie and Dean are all about what their story is we do have a ton of books on the list for this video I am going to push myself to read as many as possible for the next week or so to start off I wanted to read The Veiled Kingdom by Holly Renee again it just sounds so similar to Powerless Akatar. I'm also craving like a really good fantasy I feel like I've been reading a lot of just like cute romances I read like a ton of cowboy romances last week so I feel like I'm craving being a little dose of fantasy. So we're gonna start off with this book. It's about a girl named Naira who basically flees the castle. She's like a princess. She runs away because her father is just incredibly cruel and she's sick of being a prisoner in the castle. There's like a war going on in the kingdom at the same time though and there's this huge rebellion that is trying to fight back against the king. Somehow or some way Naira ends up in the hands of the rebellion but I don't think they know that she's like the princess or like knows who she really is. So this is gonna be really fun. This is supposed to give off some really good enemies to lovers vibes and you guys know I love that trope. So we're gonna start with this one. There's also some pictures in here that I am just living for. I love when books have little bits of artwork in them. I just feel like it makes it so much more fun while reading. That's something that Sophie Lark actually does a lot of and I love that so much about her books. But we're gonna start with The Veiled Kingdom and we're gonna hop right into it. Thank you. 
I want to do a quick little check-in with you guys. I made it to chapter 5, page 71. This is so weirdly similar to Powerless by Lauren Roberts. Like, the beginning of this book starts off with a scene that I swear, almost the same exact scene from Powerless. I was just like, wait a second, this sounds so familiar. That happened. Nonetheless, I'm actually really enjoying it so far. It tells a story of a girl named Naira, and basically she flees the castle and her father rule. She's the princess, but she's always been locked away and hidden from the public and she finally flees away. That happened and then there's also like a war kind of starting up in the kingdom and there's this rebellion of people who are trying to fight back against the king and his cruelty. Some crazy turn of events, Naira ends up in the hands of the rebellion, but they don't know necessarily who she is. Like they don't know that she's the princess of the kingdom or that she's the king's daughter, but that whole concept of the book kind of reminds me of Powerless and how Peyton was also hiding her identity throughout that story. So there's like a similar tie there between the two books. And then our MMC of the book is Dacre. He is the son of the leader of the rebellion. So Naira and him are on totally opposite sides in a way. When she's brought into the rebellion and is introduced to him, right away they're butting heads. Naira comes off as a very strong, independent, dominant type of woman. And I think that's why her and Dacre are kind of like butting heads with one another so definitely sparking up a good enemies to lovers in here which is cool but yeah we just got to the part where she is basically in the hands of the rebellion she's joining the rebellion i guess you could say and she's been put in to the warriors tier of it and dacre just happens to be the leader of the warriors so he is going to start training her to fight and defend herself and be a warrior to help the rebellion and fight against the king so this is gonna be really interesting I'm nervous already with how it's gonna go thinking of powerless in the back of my head And I remember how that story went and how it also ended feel like this can end very similar to powerless Depending on the events that take place. I'm excited to see what happens with it I'm also enjoying the flow of the writing. It's super easy and fast-paced I feel like I'm really flying through these chapters right now. We are gonna keep going and see what happens Hey guys, we are going to do a little update on the Veiled Kingdom. Basically like halfway through, I just made it to chapter 13. I only read a little bit last night and then this morning when I woke up and was just kind of like getting ready for the day, I actually read like a big chunk of this and I have to say something that I can't decide if I like or dislike is I'm flying through this so fast and I can't tell if it's because this story feels like super rushed to me or if I'm just really enjoying this type of writing style. I do feel like part of this is is a little bit rushed. I do feel like there could be more to the story that could have been added, but nonetheless, I'm still really enjoying it. The slow burn is definitely burning. I feel like we're about to hit a pivotal point in the story because I feel like the tension is just running thin between Dakre and Naira. They're constantly butting heads and fighting with each other, but you can tell that there's like a spark between the two of them. There's something so good about an enemies to lovers, but in a fantasy atmosphere. I just feel like it's top tier. It's one of my favorites. I'm excited to see everything kind of unravel between the two of them because I feel like it's going to be epic and I'm gonna love it. I still stand by what I said earlier too. I feel like this is very, very similar to Powerless. Maybe not entirely the storyline, but our two main characters just have like the same vibes to Peyton and Kai. Obviously, I'm loving that. There's also been a lot of forced proximity so far in this too that I've actually really enjoyed. There's the scene that takes place in the hot springs that I was literally just giggling to myself reading it because the tension literally insane i could feel the tension radiating off the pages between these two characters so love that and then the last chapter i just read which is chapter 12 Whew. i am so excited to see what is in store for them after chapter 12 because it was such a unexpected cute chapter that i just didn't see coming i feel like dacre is super overprotective of naira he's very much touch her and you die vibes who did this to you vibes which i also love i feel like that's such a good line when it comes to romance other than that nothing too crazy so far i'm gonna try and finish this up though and then we're gonna jump in to our next read so far i'm enjoying this i wish 
wish it was a little bit slower paced but other than that i really don't have any complaints i think it's a really cute and fun fantasy book i like the whole idea of it so far the whole rebellion fighting back against the kingdom i feel like that's such a common story written about but at the same time i just eat it up every time it's probably because growing up dystopian movies and books were super big and that was always like the big storyline in those books as well so i'm just a sucker for that type of story nonetheless we are going to keep going it's the perfect day to stay in and read it's literally been rainy and gloomy all day long so nothing but cozy vibes today okay so i finished up the veil of kingdom by holly renee okay <laughs> I liked this book, don't get me wrong. It just wasn't exactly what I expected it to be and I feel like it was very, very rushed. It does leave off on a cliffhanger, which I should have expected. Fantasy books always leave off on cliffhangers. I just, ugh, I hate cliffhangers, but I don't. Like, if I have the second book in my hand, I love them and I'm so excited to jump into the next story. If I don't have the second book and the second book isn't even out yet, I am so angry about it because I just wanna know what happens next. I like the ending of this book, but again, there were just a lot of similarities in this book that I kept relating to Powerless. So I feel like because of that, it knocked it down a little bit rating wise for me. And then it also felt really, really rushed in a way. I feel like we were just jumping so fast through everything. Although I enjoyed the slow burn, I wish it was almost slower because again, it just felt really rushed. But also the spice in this is like not my favorite. But like take that with a grain of salt because spice in general in books I'm finding is not my favorite. So that's another thing I kind of took into consideration when deciding my final rating of this book but if we're talking positives of the book because there are a lot of positives i loved our two main characters i thought the tension and chemistry between them was really fun the enemies to lovers the slow burn in it i thought was amazing you guys know those are some of my favorite tropes when it comes to reading romance i did enjoy the storyline of this i thought naira's backstory was super interesting but i also really liked dacre's whole story and i'm very excited to see what happens in book two and what they decide to do what paths they choose. Very similar to Peyton and Kai, you can tell that they care for one another, but they have to decide where their loyalties are. I do love stories like this. I literally get lost in these types of worlds and I love that. I love when I can just dilly-dally off and daydream about being in a fantasy book. That's exactly the type of vibes I got from this. I was able to pull some really cute quotes from this. Again, the enemies to lovers was amazing. The chemistry was amazing. There were just certain scenes in the book, mostly like the spice scenes that it was just kind of weird for me, but nonetheless, I still really enjoyed it. I landed on a 3.5 star rating. It probably would have been a 4 star if it wasn't for like the cringy spice and just like some of the weird offhanded comments. But nonetheless, I thought this was really fun. It was cute. It was exciting. If you're looking for a fun, easygoing, romantic -y book where you don't have to think too much about the world or what's really going on, now that we've completed that book, we have more books to get through. I brought out these five books because I didn't know which one of them I wanted to jump into right away. I think I'm going to choose the hockey romance. It was between this and Night Shift. Yeah, I'm gonna do the hockey romance. We're gonna jump into Icebound by Meredith Trapp. This is book one in the Boundless Player series and it's supposed to be a fun, cutie little hockey romance. I'm pretty sure it's an age gap trope in here, which is kind of cool. I think there's like other topics that are discussed in here that I remember being really interested in, but this is also the Probably Smut special edition cover. I'll put like the normal cover here. I don't even know what it looks like, honestly, but this is the special edition cover from Probably Smut and I think it is so beautiful i just love the whole like vibe and aesthetic of it and i love like this little cross stitch pattern i don't know what it is i think that's adorable and i can't wait to see like the meaning behind this this is what it looks like though i'm hoping they go on to make like the rest of the books in the series as special editions because i think it'll look so cute with all of the jersey numbers like lined up i haven't read a hockey romance in a hot minute so i'm pretty excited to read one we are gonna jump into it and honestly we're gonna spend the whole night reading because it's super rainy and gloomy out. Chris is actually leaving for hockey practice soon too. So we're just gonna have a cozy little night in. Hopefully this is a winner. We are doing a little reading check-in for Icebound. I am on chapter 14, page 149. 
I swear this apartment makes the creepiest sounds possible. I'm almost halfway through, but I wanted to stop now and do a little check-in because I'm about to actually start making dinner. So far, I think it's a very cutie, typical hockey romance. There's an age gap in here. I remember going into this, there were gonna be like certain topics discussed. One of the topics covers anxiety and what it's like to live with anxiety. Our main character, Nina, has really bad anxiety and she doesn't like being in big crowds. She doesn't really like being in new spaces spaces, stuff like that, which I feel like a lot of people can probably relate to. I know I can. I was very shy growing up and I still am a very shy person. All throughout high school and even college, I was so shy. I had the worst anxiety being in new places. I didn't want to talk to anybody. In my mind, I constantly thought that I was doing something wrong or I was saying something wrong or I was looking dumb or whatever it may be. It's the most ridiculous thought process, I know, but that's literally anxiety for you. So our main character Nina struggles a lot with that and it's really interesting to read about her story and like her point of view on it. Our other main character Road is a hockey player. He's a goalie. I believe he's 32 or 33. Nina is 20. Two. Wait, Nina's 22. I think Rode is 34 now that I think about it. In this story, Rode seems to be struggling with the thought of maybe retiring because he's getting to that age. Being a goalie is starting to be really rough on his body and the stuff he has to do for it. He's very hard on the age gap between him and Nina. Basically makes this oath to himself and everybody else that he will not engage with Nina because she's too young for him and he just feels like she should be out doing normal 22 year old things whereas he is kind of getting to that stage in his life where he wants to get married and have kids. They're just in a totally different spots in their lives and they want totally different things at the moment. So that's another reason why Road is really big on the age gap thing and not engaging with her. The way they meet I think is really funny because she ends up being his like Uber driver after a night out. The whole drive home and everything that happens in between is crazy but also really funny and sweet. What happens though during their drive home basically sets up the rest of the story. Although Road makes this oath to basically stay away from her and not engage with her because she's so young. They're kind of forced to be near each other. So we have a little bit of forced proximity in here and we're just watching the tension grow between the two of them. Everything that they have planned out basically is spiraling right now because they obviously can't stay away from each other. I am really enjoying this though. It's adorable. You guys know I'm a sucker for cutie little hockey romances. The one thing I will say that I do find a little bit annoying is how adamant Rode is on the age gap. He's like crazy about the age difference between the two of them and I understood it the first few times that he said it but I feel like it's every single chapter that he's just talking about this age gap and circling back to it. It's just getting to the point where I'm like okay I get it. Why are we talking about this every chapter? So that's like the only thing that I'm kind of like... <laughs> But other than that, I think it's really fun. I am hoping we're getting close to like some fun parts of the book just because I do feel like it's kind of been dragging on a little bit. I also haven't been highlighting too much, but nothing that has me swooning over the characters yet. So I'm hoping we get some better quotes as we keep going, but that's my little update for you guys. We're about a third through the book, so I'm gonna spend the rest of tonight reading. Long time no chat guys. I actually don't remember the last time we checked in or talked to each other. I do have a ton of fun updates for you guys. Three books. So I finished Icebound by Meredith Trapp last night and I started Night Shift this morning and then I actually started listening to the audiobook for Legendary. We will do a quick review of Icebound. So this book started off really good for me. I was very like optimistic about it especially because it's a hockey romance and I'm usually
actually such a sucker for hockey romances. I don't know what it is, but they're just super easy and fun romances for me to get into. I have to say with this one specifically though, there was just something, I don't know guys, there was something not giving in this book for me. I feel like this was almost like overwritten in a way. I feel like there was just a lot of extra content in here that we didn't necessarily need. The whole age gap trope in this, usually that's a trope I actually really enjoy in romances, but for some reason in this one, I just like, I feel like they just talked about it so much. Like the whole book was just them talking about the age gap and I feel like it just got to a point where I was kind of just sick of hearing about it. Once I got to the end of this, I just felt like I was a little bit disappointed because the ending felt very rushed and to the point. I feel like the conflict in here wasn't really like a major conflict. I thought something bigger was gonna happen in this and nothing just happened. I feel like I was disappointed a little bit about that. And then again, I just feel like there was so much extra content in here that we didn't necessarily need and instead could have been replaced with a more interesting type of conflict or even a longer written out ending because the ending of this just felt so rushed and I was disappointed. I did really like our two main characters, Nina and Rode. I thought they were absolutely adorable. I thought their relationship was really sweet, but there were just moments where I was like, okay, like what are we doing? It's one of those books where I just felt like I wasted a lot of time with. I'm one of those people who like refuses to DNF a book. Like if I don't like a book, I have to finish it no matter what. I never liked to DNF a book. This was a book that I constantly kind of wanted to DNF even at the end. It was just a little disappointing for me and I feel like this is a very harsh and mean type of review. I don't usually do like reviews like this. I know everybody's different and I know some people probably love this book and think it's the best book ever and that's okay. Like it's okay to have different opinions and stuff but sometimes when I give harsh reviews or give my honest opinion on a book that maybe I just didn't really like, I feel guilty. I'm sorry about that. If we're talking positives, like I mentioned, I loved Nina. I love Rode. I thought their characters were really cute. I thought the chemistry was there but also kind of lacking. I'm trying to talk positives and I'm going right back into the negatives. I think this is a cute fluffy hockey romance if you're looking for just something fun and easy, something you don't really have to think too much about. I think this could possibly work for that, but nonetheless, I landed on a three star rating. The only reason why it's a three star and not a two star for me, the side characters in this book, I'm pretty sure we're gonna get a book on Micah Cruz and we're gonna get a book on Patty. That's why this book actually ended up being a three star for me, just because of his teammates in this book. I thought they were so cute, so funny, and silly, the bickering, and also just like their friendships with Road directly. I feel like it was very genuine and sweet. I love books that have really good, strong side characters to them. So that's actually what made this a three star. This morning, I picked up Night Shift by Annie Crown, and I really wanted to read this book in this vlog specifically because it's a book I picked up like a few weeks ago, and I've just been eyeing it so hard. It's basically about this cute girl in college. She's a book warm and she takes the night shifts at her school library over the weekend when everyone else is out partying and hanging out with friends. She basically has like a meet cue with the school's star basketball player. I've just seen so many funny and relatable quotes just regarding book lovers in general. So I wanted to jump into this one. I didn't make it too far yet. I'm only on chapter three when I tell you that I've already highlighted so much of this book and I've read two chapters. There's just something so funny to me reading about book lovers because they're just the most relatable characters for me to read about. I just read about the little meet cute that our two main characters kind of have and it's honestly hilarious because our FMC is just constantly in a daydream it feels like because she's always reading romance and stuff. When she's helping out the basketball player find a book in the library, it is just so funny like what's going through her head as she's helping him. So loving that so far. And then we have Legendary which is book two in the Caraval series. Actually pretty far in this already because I've slowly been making my way through the audiobook. I've made it to chapter 28, page 292. <gasps> what? That is so cool in this copy. At the very end of the book, there's an annotated version from Stephanie Garber herself and she basically takes us through her thought process for writing Legendary. That is so cool, I cannot wait to get to that. Okay, sorry, I'm getting a little sidetracked here. Like I said, I've slowly been making my way through the audiobook. I started it like a few days ago. I listened to it when I'm at the gym, when I'm cooking, if I'm taking Osiris out by myself, stuff like that. I've had quite some time with it, but I'm I'm 
I'm really enjoying it so far. I think I'm actually enjoying it more than book one. If you're not familiar, book one is about Scarlett and then book two is about her sister Donatella. Going into this, I had very mixed feelings because I was excited to see Donatella's point of view from everything, but at the same time, I was almost really nervous about it because I am one of the few people who actually read the Once Upon a Broken Heart series before Caraval. So I know a little bit of a backstory about Donatella. I feel like if I would have read the Caraval series first, I would have went into Once Upon a Broken Heart. He's just giving off really weird vibes and I'm just, I don't know how I feel about it. But I'm still liking this a lot more than book one. I think because I know some of the characters from Once Upon a Broken Heart that are being presented in this book, I just like it a little bit more because now I'm making connections and I'm trying to think back to Once Upon a Broken Heart when this was said or this happened and now I'm like, oh, now I kind of understand what people were saying when they said like to read Caraval first. Aside from the Once Upon a Broken Heart connections, I think this has been a lot more fun. I feel like Donatella has a lot more on her plate, a lot more that she's almost working for and trying to figure out. So that's something I'm really enjoying about this. And then I don't know what it is, but Donatella's character is just really fun in my opinion. I'm also weirdly loving Dante in this so far. And I feel like in book one, I was really iffy on him as well. Legendary is definitely feeling maybe like a four star to me. So I think I'm gonna keep going in Night Shift though. I have to see if this book is going to be as good as I think it's gonna be. Because right now I've only read two chapters and and for some reason, I have the highest hopes ever for it. Okay, I just wanted to do a quick check-in with you guys because we're about to head out and go to a baseball game. But I got through a pretty big chunk of the night shift last night. And then I did a ton of reading this morning. I think I read like 50 pages this morning. So I made it to chapter 21, page 157. I'm also tabbing and annotating this one. I'm really just highlighting a bunch of book-related quotes in this because our main character is like a book lover. She works at the library. Library, and there's just so many good relatable book quotes in this. That aspect of the book I am absolutely loving because our main character is constantly referencing romance books and what romance is like in those books compared to romance in the real world. I'm just finding so many funny and relatable quotes and I feel like she's slowly realizing that maybe there are actual like good guys in the real world. I feel like my voice is like not normal right now so excuse that there are really good guys in the real world in real life because in the beginning of the book she very much believed that only good guys existed in books so it's been really fun to kind of see her theory proven wrong i think our mmc vincent is also very cute he has a lot of good lines in this do you feel like this is a tad I don't want to say like weird, but there are like some weird moments in this book. I feel like Wattpad books, they have a very specific vibe to them and they all are like just a little bit weird for me. Nonetheless, I am really enjoying this. It's very cute. I don't think it's going to be a five star just because it's very insta lovey and the story is kind of just going by pretty fast. I feel like everything is escalating very quickly in this, but I really like it so far. I feel like it's a fluffy, feel good type of romance. If you're looking for like a cheesy type of love story, this is probably going to be perfect perfect for you. I think there's only 150 pages left. Probably gonna try and finish it up tonight and then we'll talk all about it. I don't remember the last time we actually talked in a vlog so that's my bad. Yesterday it was just a really fun and kind of like Chris and me type of day. We went for a super long walk with Osiris in the morning because it was beautiful out and then we actually ended up having a cutie little baseball game day and that was so much fun except it got really really cold like towards the end of the game and I literally Really didn't think I was going to make it through the cold for the fireworks but we ended up staying for the fireworks show which was very very fun I don't know what's going on but the weather is just so weird here it was beautiful yesterday and then today it's just been really gloomy and rainy which is super unfortunate but it started off so cute guys I don't know what happened it's really just like the book lover quotes that I'm annotating there's nothing else that I'm like really hanging on to like the romance aspect of it is definitely not my favorite favorite like it's cute but it's very insta lovey and it's also really heavy on the miscommunication trope which it's just like, I don't know. I feel like everybody hates that trope and we get it so often in romance books. In this book specifically, it is so heavy on that trope and it's so funny because the main girl character in it is a book lover and she talks about how much she hates the miscommunication trope and it's just like the irony throughout the book of her talking about that trope while she's actively doing it. It's so 
it's so frustrating i'm very underwhelmed with it and i also feel like some of you know the romancing scenes in it just aren't my favorite to be honest but nonetheless i'm gonna try and finish it up i don't know what i'm gonna rate it just yet because it's cute and i am loving the little quotes that i'm taking from it but like storyline wise i don't know i feel like it's kind of weird i can't decide what i'm gonna do just yet Okay guys, so it's been a hot minute. I had one chapter left to read in this book. I finished it this morning and then I just finished reading Legendary. This is a book that I feel like I really have to unpack. I don't know if I'm like settled yet on a rating just because there's a lot of stuff that happened in this book that I just kind of wasn't expecting. We're gonna start with Night Shift first. I. <laughs> I had so many high hopes for this book, guys, and I'm honestly so upset. Honestly, I had a lot of high hopes for all the books in today's reading vlog, and I feel like most of them were kind of a bust, which is really rare for me. I feel like I rarely read a book that I actually don't like or enjoy. I feel like all the books I've read so far in this vlog, I'm just very underwhelmed with. None of them are like wowing me. We didn't have any five or four star ratings, except for Legendary. I feel like Legendary might be a four star, but again, I feel like I need time to unpack that and process it, but night shift i had high hopes for this guys all of these tabs that you see they're all book related quotes about being a book lover there's some really funny relatable cute quotes from this book i have to say though for like the whole storyline i don't know it wasn't my favorite the whole storyline of this book takes place i think over the course of one month and it just feels like everything was moving so incredibly fast in this i'm pretty sure i've already covered the basics about it but we have a cutie a book loving college student she spends most of her days in the library and reading book on friday nights she works at the library while everyone else is out partying she has a very fun meet cute type of encounter with the school's star basketball player he's basically guaranteed to go pro after college and they have this crazy and very dramatic meet cute in the beginning so i feel like the way they met and how everything kind of played out in the beginning i should have known from that point on the book was just gonna get weirder i think i already talked about it but the miscommunication trope in this is also like the main trope and and it drives me crazy the way that Kendall is just assuming things the entire story about Vincent. I'm just like, girl, get it together. Just talk to him. Like, it was driving me crazy. It was weird. It was cringy. I know it's about college students but like this was just so cringy there were some really cute moments don't get me wrong there were some very sweet adorable little scenes where i was giggling and i thought vincent was being a total like heartthrob i want to say like a few chapters in i was like okay this is probably gonna be like another three star read i don't see it being a four star but i have to say like very end of the book just made it go down to a two star because i could not believe like for five six chapters straight we were just we were just there i landed on a two star read for this there's like this one bookstore scene towards the end of the book and i'm just like this book was interesting to say the least that was a two-star read for me i'm curious to know if there's going to be other books in that same world because there are side characters in it that i feel like would be interesting to read about but at the same time i don't know if i want to put myself through that again so that happened we read that it was two stars and then i finished up legendary of course the fantasy book saves the vlog legendary i'm very torn right now between a four and five star rating i'm just like trying to sit with it because i feel like especially towards the end of this so much happened I really enjoyed this a lot more than the first book. I feel like Donatella's story just had so much more to it compared to Scarlet's and felt more important and it was more interesting in my opinion. The whole love triangle thing I'm a little iffy on just because like once upon a broken heart is like my favorite but at the same time dante is just wow i really love his character right now and i am so so excited to jump in to the last book which is finale i cannot wait to see what that book has in store for all our characters yeah that is it for today's reading vlog we read a total of four books i'm ending it out here because today is actually sunday we only have i think two or three days left in the month of april i am gonna try and read like one or two more books 
this month we're gonna see if i can like power through so stay tuned for my reading wrap up to see if i make it through more books i hope you guys enjoyed it though i hope you had fun if you made it this far in the video comment down below a book you went into with very high hopes you thought it was gonna be a five star the best book you've ever read and it ended up disappointing you i'm really curious to know what books have been underwhelming to you guys because i feel like i had a ton of books in this vlog and now i feel like i can't trust the books i pick out i feel like my radar is all off now usually i have a really good book radar especially when i'm book shopping and now i feel like it's all off because i had like so many flops in this video but i love you guys so so much and i'll see you in the next one